Shout out to Malachi. How you doing, Malachi? Like you got Cheryl, you got one name, Raj. Yeah, <laughs> Raj. That's all good. Um, why are you here today? I got something to say. You want to write platform? We are the voice of the voiceless. So let me give you the the platform, Doctor Raj. Please tell me what you got to say. Man, you know I've been working in the system for a minute, right? Like, so I've always understood that the traditional system, as we call it, is set up right, is set up to be in a place where it is working on compliance and, and, and enforcement. And it is always about, right, if you fail to do what is required of you, we're going to punish you, mm. right? It's about having jump up boys, right? It is always having about having enforcement ready to attack. And it is never about, right, it is never about working with the community, working with any individual who has fallen through the cracks, who has made the mistakes, right? We don't address the root causes of, of our problems. We always do the colonial medicine practice. We want to fix things by removing people who are problematic to the system, right? We never keep them in the system to work through and help them, right, better the system, better the way we operate, Rather, we work to fix the system because the system, right, needs to be fixed by removing folks from the system. So you made a mistake, you need to be removed and keep the system intact, right? It's never about working at the roots level. So that's what I've been, like, thinking, how do we, how do, we do that work? Because all research that has been done for the past 100 years plus have pointed out all of these ways to undo crime as we know it, undo problems as we know it. Dr. King said there are four things that we need to work on. Poverty, racism, militarism, and materialism. Right. Right? So if we work on poverty and we address racism and then we work on materialism because materialism, it removes humanity from the peace. Right? So we live in a society that that loves things and uses people, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's supposed to be the other way around, right? Right. You're supposed to love people and use things, right? But we have come, so that's the that's the ultimate of what materialism does to us. It dehumanizes and disenfranchises us. And militarism is built in because this country, right, was founded on violence and they kept it up. Mm -hmm. They built we better weapons, they made sure everybody is distributed, and they become one of the world's best weapon sellers, mm -hmm. right? And we keep importing and, and building violence into everything that we do. So prison is a violent place. Jails are a violent place, right? So I'm taking you out of problem area, and then I'm reintroducing you into a violent place. What, what is that? Mm. Right? Where is the rehabilitation in that? Right. Or right? Reform. So these lies that they have been telling us has been, has been a part of the construction of the narrative of this country. Um, with that being said, um, the criminal justice system, we've seen a lot of um, progression with it. I mean, right now we say it's progression, but realistically it's where we should have been a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we look at it's progression, um, cause that's all we can call it, uh, for better, lack of better terms. Um, what are you seeing that you're excited about in this criminal justice system 
that you didn't see before. Because I know you've walked this walk for a long time. You've seen a lot of stuff. But it's a, I feel like there's an excitement going on. Um, I'm not sure where it, where it happened or when it happened. But think, pe people think, seem to be talking a little bit more positively about criminal justice. Where do you think that's coming well, from? Well, I'll be honest with you, bro. Well, I don't share that excitement with folk, right? Because I don't see progress, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seeing progress. What I'm seeing is that they're refining the system. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Right, they're refining the system so they can be a little more targeted in their work okay. versus really undoing the footprints of a enforcement system so that I can continue to engage the community in healing and then repairing and then restoring their people's humanity. Right. Right? If you don't heal, you don't repair, right? You cannot restore, right? So this system is not interested in all of that work. This system is interested in saying, you made a mistake, so we're gonna punish you, and that punishment should serve as a lesson for you, so when you come out, stop making the mistake. But I'm not gonna change the environment that, that allowed, or that, that created the kind of behavior that you display. Right. So I haven't, I haven't done anything with the environment, right? I'm going to go there and change the criminal justice system because, oh, we're going to have, you know, we're, we're going to have more time for you to, uh, to go to school. Man, why? Give me the school when I'm out here. Right. Pour the money into the community. Right. Here's a, here's a small research that was done in Chicago. They looked at one, one of the jails in Chicago, right, and, and, and looked at who all is in that jail. And they found out that 70% of the kids who are in there came from two blocks. Mm. Two blocks. Yeah. When they are here, I'm spending millions of dollars trying to fix them. But when they're out here in these blocks, I spend nothing. Mm -hmm. And you call that reform? Right? I mean, that's ridiculous logic, bro. I seen, I seen that, 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 that concept. And when I came up here, I, I noticed that a lot of gentlemen that I grew up with were in jail with me in prison. Yeah. I hadn't seen them since I left high school. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this is the one place. That you it's see. almost like a reunion yeah. that I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen individuals. And yeah. we share a, a common zip code. Yeah, right? that's it. Right, and they, yeah. they, they mapped these zip codes and said oh, that they're million dollar zip codes because you can take these individuals, this workforce, these people put, yeah. out and you put them in these communities, these joints, these, yeah. yeah, these prisons, yeah. and they make millions and oh, yeah. millions of dollars oh, yeah. for that community. Oh, yeah. If it's not just being a body in the cell yeah. so they can count as a vote. But think about all of the ways that the prison system serves the economy, right? Phone systems, Correct. for the longest time they charge folk a hell of a lot of money, yeah. medical systems, pharmaceutical companies yeah. came from folk who are inside. I mean, you say pill time. Look, yeah. look yeah. your room. I mean, I've been in classes where everybody is gone. Well, that, I'd be like, you are all pills? That's the purposeful, that's the. That's what they, that's how their medical services work. Oh, yeah. Um, and they, they, they're, they're quick to give you a prescription. Oh, yeah. And then, then, but the environment, a lot of like, I was in a situation where they wanted to prescribe all types of medication to me. And I asked the nurse, like, isn't the first line of, of correcting a problem is the environment? Like you got me in an environment where yeah. it broods yeah. depression. Yeah. It, I'm, I'm, I, I can't move around. So of course my cholesterol is going to be high. My blood pressure is going to be high, but you want to give me medication for it yeah. for me to take. Instead of trying to change my environment, environment yeah. right? So right. Yeah, I've been yeah. I've, I've been through that conversation. No, with it's, them. it's like and then and then everything, right? The state benefits from prison labor, of course, right? They they make they make revenue from it. What millions of dollars yeah. of revenue? Yes. from that cheap labor. True. And what's the difference between that cheap labor? They enslavement nothing so this is this is why right like when when Jonathan was here we talked there is a direct through line between the 13th amendment and what's happening in in prison so i don't i you know when people say we are making progress i'll be like you know 
progress according to who? Yeah, well, that Malcolm X said it the best. Yeah. You stick a knife in me, pull it out. Yeah. Stick it into me nine and pull it out five. <laughs> you can't tell me that's progress. That's progress. Yeah, it's not. I understand. Come on, bro. Yeah, definitely. You, you, 110%. And I brought the conversation to you um, about progress and people feeling happy and about you know certain changes being made and things like that. But all I wanted to get at the end of the day is like, there we we're so far behind the eight ball. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, unless they start letting people out left and right, yeah. you know, we're never going to be able to catch up to what's going on. But even there, you know, Mo, we we were outside during uh, you know COVID period, and we thought, okay, now is the time for you to really think about how you're operating the system because. You ain't got no help inside. Right. Right? So, okay, let's think about it. Let's be logical. Yes. That's when they say, what is logic is that we're going to let everybody who has medical issues apply. Yeah. And then we were, we're going to rely on the medical system, right? Science, yeah. medical system to say they're qualified to be released. Right. Medical release. Yes. Over a thousand people apply. Yes. Guess what? This dude who has a social work degree commissioner decided that I'm going to deny all of those other applicants. So we're going to, we're going to give 300 people release the thousand over people. Sorry. What was his reason behind oh, that? Because he said they were too dangerous. Um, wait, wait, the medical community has said they should be released right. based on the evaluation. But these dude decided that he's going to keep them because because it was a political decision. So our prisons have no logic when people say, you know, we're gonna send these dangerous people away. Away to where? Away to what? Right. right? You're not trying to work with them. You are trying to remove them. Right, 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 right. And, that, and that's part of the incapacitation as a deterrent yeah. is, is, is a, is a, is a ma methodical move because out of sight, out of mind, we put him behind the bars, he's gone for 10 years, problem solved, supposedly, right? Supposedly, um, what, we've, what we've seen though is um, it's been mentioned, what Jonathan mentioned it, you're mentioning about the rehabilitation part of it, but we all understand that that, that device, that mechanism was removed a long time ago. Yeah. They don't even act as though rehabilitation is yeah. part of prison. It's all punitive. Oh, yeah. They want you to suffer. They want to make sure that when you come out, you continue to suffer. It's 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 it's, it's purposeful. There's not oh. they're, they're, they're the people who who created this new system specifically geared it for punishment, oh, yeah. and that's all it's going to give. There's yeah. nothing else that it's. You're, you're supposed to receive from it. If you're lucky if you receive rehabilit rehabilitation out of it because it's not designed for that at all. So, so those elements of putting that part into it, rehabilitation, that conversation, um, has not even been had by anybody um, because I don't know whether we want to say it exists and it doesn't, act like it does exist, but... That conversation has not been had, and everybody knows that prisons don't rehabilitate anyone. No, it doesn't. And and, and, the, and the reason why we all we outside are saying like this this ain't working is because we know on average about six hundred fifty thousand people get out throughout the country. Right. Of of the prison yes. every year. Yes. Right. But if we are not giving them the opportunity to work through all of the trauma that they have experienced and the pain they have gone through and, and paid some form of an apology, some way to repair the harm, then you send them out. Now what? Well, yeah, you send them off worse than when they oh, were yeah. in because before I, I didn't have a felony, now I have one. Yeah. So I, I'm automatically off the off go yeah. Oh, yeah. more worse challenging yeah it's yeah. going to be challenging yeah so yeah i mean I, I i get it i mean like how does that make any sense no i you know but but their interest is not sense right because they, this is not a rational space prison is not a rational space prison is a reactionary space right definitely a reactionary yeah, space yeah definitely this is how we as a society going to react to your behavior we are not going to reflect on your behavior. We no. are not going to respond to your behavior. 
who are going to react to your, your, your behavior. So prison, right, as, a, as an institution, no law enforcement as, as an institution, no child welfare as an institution. I mean, social workers, right? These are all reactionary systems that we have built, Mom. Right? So when, when, I, when they say to me, like, look at all the changes we are making, bro, you're still building within that reactionary system a small pipeline for change. That ain't enough. Oh, well, yeah. Right? Because at the end of the day, when you are short of money, that small pipeline is the first thing to go. Yeah. Because your entrenched system has not been affected, changed. Right. So what, right. what do you, are you, do you, do you want to go further with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No, so what we are, what, what we are saying is, all right, after all these years of research, and I tell my colleagues in academia, I say, stop researching. I don't want any more research. I don't want any more data points to tell me what to change, right? We keep spinning our wheels like, oh, I need data on that. I say, bro, go study, go read, right? Don't ask me to justify what I'm saying because I'm tired of justifying for every freaking politician. Mm -hmm. Because you either know it in your body and feel it in your body, or don't come to this space and say, I want to do some work, right? right? Because I am tired of allies trying to do something about it. I need you to be an accomplice meaning I need you to get in there and disrupt the system. Right. Right? At the highest level, from the governor on to the guard, you, I need accomplices and not allies because allies will come in and say, I feel sorry, I'm going to make a few changes here and there, but, but intact, the, what's, what's in the middle and the core st stays the same. I have it impacted. So we say, right, Prisons ain't the answer because harm is still happening, right? We can't arrest ourselves out of crime, right? So we, we because Dr. King's saying, right, we haven't addressed, it, addressed poverty, we haven't addressed racism, we haven't addressed militarism or materialism. So we don't address all of these things. We're still, in the next 50 years, we're still going to have the same problem. Right. We're still going to be locking people up. Right. Right, we still need to rely on police departments to arrest us. Right, right, as opposed to saying, "Hey, I'll give you a good example, Mo." One morning, man, I was sitting grading papers in a in a nice coffee shop, right in Chenahassen. So I'd be like grading papers. There was a group of people talking, and I'm like, you know, I was just eavesdropping. I was still grading papers. I was like just paying attention. They were talking five people in the table. Right? One of them said, oh, summer, spring is coming, and I'm ready for summer. And I'm like all excited for that too, right? And then one of them said, what are you going to do? What are your plans for this summer? Oh, we're planning on traveling. We're going to do about 10 countries. I'm like, wow. I'm like, damn, that must be nice, right? And then the next person said, oh, we decided to buy another house. So a person from across the table, right, asked, how many houses do y'all have? Oh, we've got about five houses. And they're like, the next person goes, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to add a boat to our, you know, our house. Oh, what does that make it? Like, oh, that's, uh, oh, that's 20 boats now. So, and then the next person was traveling, right? Next person is spending time with their grandchildren and all that stuff. So I'm hearing all these conversations, man, I'm grading. And then I looked at my time. I said, man, shit, I got to be in North, uh, you know, uh, Lowry Library, right? And I've got a case, so I'm packing my stuff up, jump into my car. I drove, I drove fast, a little bit fast, right? Got to the library on Lowry from Chan Asin, right? And I looked at my time, and it was like about, what, 12 to 15 minutes. So I run up, I was sit, and this young woman, mother, myself, and another facilitator in that space, and we're like, okay, so what was the case? The facilitator asked, so tell us what happened. And the young woman said, well, you know, friends of mine, and we went into a tar Target store, and we're looking around, I saw this makeup set, 
And, and so I just kind of took it, and I got busted. So I'm like, I said, how much is that makeup set? And why did you take it? She said, I want to look pretty, you know. My mom can't afford it. I said, so how much is that again? $14. <laughs> Man, that's when it hit me. <laughs> that conversation in that coffee shop, mm -hmm. and I drove mm -hmm. no more than 15 minutes. Yep. What a world of difference. Yeah. And this is what we are criminalizing, mm -hmm. right? Majority of the folk in our prison systems are there because of poverty. Correct. Poverty led violence. Yeah. Not innate violence, but systemic and environmental concerns that led, right? So I'm telling you, it just like, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at this young woman, I'm saying, you have every right to feel like you want to be look, look pretty. Right, definitely. You should have access to that right. makeup set. Because these folks right here, bought a 20 boats, five houses, traveling 10 countries. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what, what is this? It's, it's, you know, that is, you know, when you sit in truth like that, that's when you, your conscience is troubled. Right? In Islam, they say, right, jihad. Mm -hmm. That internal jihad mm -hmm. starts to shake and vibrate, bro. And if it doesn't vibrate, I don't want you to make any policies. Because your policy is head-informed, rational. Mm -hmm. It doesn't involve the, the, the wounds and the struggles in the body. So you may be doing progressive things, but your progressivism is still harming me. Sure. Well, you're doing way more, more, more than that. But that that dichotomy that you just explained, um, for you to be able to traverse it and then understand it and articulate it, shows your journey. Because um, most people it would have just been one conversation, or another oh, conversation. Yeah. There would never be any connectivity. So this is the reason why we're we're talking now, uh, because that 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 definitely exists, and that exceptionalism makes prison systems work right oh, yeah. it, it's it's the it's the it's the reason why you're a criminal and i'm not right but nobody actually does any in, in, in investigation into the difference it makes to you go back back to the um zip codes yeah. you know what i'm saying it's just like something's being criminalized over here um me sit, sitting around in front of a corner store you do the same thing 15 minutes away and it's not a crime it's not a crime yeah, yeah so back on camera, um, we're going to talk more about that because i I, di I didn't get my degree i got my two year in prison yeah. but i got my four year on the outside, outside yeah. and i want to talk to you more about that yeah. we're going to take a quick break and come right back yeah. with more dr raj restorative justice deal and just criminal justice in general just how it's it's it, it, I was I, I entered the, I entered the conversation with the word progressive um, just because there's been a lot of things going on um, but I, I, I as much as I think that we're moving towards something I don't I think it's too little too late yeah. you know I think that the um, that the, that they, 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 they've harmed so many people um, and took away so many people's lives and livelihoods. It's just how do you fix it by just restoring the vote or not banning a box or, or whatever? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's it, it's 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 a it's a multi unilateral um, 
thing that needs to be addressed, and it's 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 something that I don't know if that, that that they're happy with business as usual. But you know, so what what they're trying to do now, right? In the name of progress, it's like okay, we're going to give you the right to vote. We're gonna we're gonna bend the box, and then when you when you come up for hiring, right? When I pick the best top three, then I get the right to check right. your record. Right. right? Yeah. So until then, I'll, I'll 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 let you through the interview, and I I don't know what that is, right? I, is I it know progress? what it is. I know what it is. You know. I know exactly what it is. It's it's basically getting a man's hope up. Yeah. And then dashing them. And then because that's how I felt yeah. like every time I went through the process. Yeah. You know, it's it's just like when you tell me seven to ten years, I sh you know, you're going to go back. I figure that that's the totality of your criminal background check. Anything prior to that should not be of any use to you uh, or it should be so null and void yeah. that how are you going to utilize that when you're saying that I'm qualified for the position? But, but also ask the next level of question, right? We say that our prisons were meant to change you. Correct. So if you spend 12 years in prison, yes. then trust the fact that they have changed. Yeah. Right? But if you don't, you they spend 12 years in prison, they come out and they're still suffering for another 12 years, then you're telling, so you, you're essentially telling me the system that you paid for and you lifted up, right? In the state of Minnesota, we pay $650 million to maintain 10 prisons, right? That's a lot of money. That's a country. Right? Yeah. yeah. Country. Right, and and then you don't trust your own system when I get out. But the the, the further that conversation is that what business you know that's as ran as horrible as criminal as, as corrections the DOC is run. Oh if yeah. You, if you looked at that business on paper and you seen that it was oh, yeah. losing nothing but money. Oh yeah. That it was costing nothing but yeah. money, and all you need is more money to continue to run. You would kill that. So we know it is not a rational. Right, a rational business, a rational setup, because it is not meant to produce any kind of outcome. It is meant to satisfy yeah. the rich and the influential. Right, right. That we have a thin blue line between what order and chaos. Right, that's the thin blue line. That's why law enforcement is so cherished in this country because we say that they are the thin blue line between chaos and order. And I tell folks, man, y'all don't, please don't fly those flags around because you have no idea the history of that flag, that mm. term. Yeah. It was never a thin blue line. It mm. was always a thin red line. Yeah. You know, that's what the colonial masters said. The British said, you settlers here are the chaotic people. We, the colonial folks, are the order. So we are here in our red coat to keep order. Mm -hmm. And we just moved, changed it today and call it the thin blue line in the 1950s and say, this is, this is, we are, we on this side maintain order. You all on this side are chaotic and we're going to try to keep all of y'all in order. Right? So when people say, oh, the thin blue line is just about cops, they say, no, it's an ideology. Yeah, definitely. It's a belief system. And these belief systems, are based on people's fear, it's based on people's status, right? It is not a rational process. There's no rationality in prison systems. Yeah, yeah. never has been. Yes. Never. I mean, you would. That I would always utilize when I was in prison. I would see dog food commercials, and the dog food commercials, the food that they were feeding the dogs looked better. We look better than what they. Yeah. I mean, you never, you never, you had people take, be offended. If you treated a dog like you treated a human being, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But somehow all this is missed, you know. And you go, you made a good point, you know, with the Thirteenth Amendment. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people put enough weight on how that that constitutional yeah. amendment yeah. Had, governs yeah. um, the, the 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 individual who's in prison. Yeah. Their their yeah. their self-determination yeah. because of what it does and what the state of Minnesota has been so fortunate at, at doing, you know, deceptively is turning that individual into a vulnerable adult yes. and then having the state take over all banking, um, yeah. self-determination, yeah. wealth. I mean, yeah. the state, I mean, the state, when they, when they got rid of slavery, 
um, they took away individual's ability, but the state can still own slaves. Yes. And that's what they've been doing, yes. living off slaves. Yeah. You know? No, I, I mean, you know, so the argument about, you know, prison systems are there to make us safe, hmm. it is never about making us safe. It is always about maintaining a level of status quo. Right. Right? The rich people need to feel like they can do whatever they want and not be affected or harmed by the system. All right? I mean, think about USBC, right? One of the second largest banks, mm -hmm. JP Morgan and USBC, second largest bank. Wells Fargo is the fifth largest bank in the world. Mm. And USBC, right, under the Obama administration, they found out that they were giving money to all of the drug cartels, taking their money and flushing it and making it clean money. Laundering it. They, money laundering, mm. right? Guess what? They were told, you have to pay a fine. None of the, none went of the CEOs went to jail, bro. Yeah. They and so these cartels have been shooting at our soldiers, like our soldiers, mm -hmm. our DEA agents, killing law enforcement in Mexico. Yes, right, and get, because they funded them, and they would find a billion dollars. Guess what? A billion dollars is one month revenue for USBC. Sure. One month revenue. This Guess what they said? Write a check, and they say, "Get out of my face." But that we, I was just having a conversation about the same situation where, where they, we talk about how they built out all those banks. Yeah. So they took our money, yeah. bailed them out. And individuals lost their homes, yeah. lost lost everything. Yeah. But there was no type of bailout or anything for them. I mean, they were able to write them oh, billions yeah. of dollars. Yeah, they put, they no spent problems. $750 billion the first round, the second round was $850 billion. And that money came out, so they, so it goes right back to what we've been talking about, is that, that um, the way they take individuals and they point the finger at you and make you yeah. feel as though you're the Jeez, individual yeah. who's caused the problem, and you are the problem, yeah. um, and then be able to then take again another situation and be able to figure out how to rectify that situation. Yeah. Again, like you say, bail them out, yeah. whatever it might be, write me a check. I wish they told me I could write a check. You know what I'm saying? I wish they gave me that they option. They gave you that option. Because well, yeah. with, every, with every charge, there is... A, a, a monetary amount yes. that can be paid, yes. but that ne they, they never give you that possibility. No, no, no. Of, of, in of, your case, they wanted your black body in, in that, and yeah, because that was going to make way more money. Yes. Then because yes. just sitting because what you what you were talking about, I think that the 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 if you a lot of people what they do is they put a circle around themselves and then they draw lines out to all the individuals who benefit yeah. from their incarceration. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be. You'll be shocked at how many lines you make. But think about the other the other part of that, right? I say six hundred fifty million dollars they spent budget, right? A hundred million dollars. Check this out. A hundred million dollars, y'all, is set aside for nonprofit agencies to work with brothers and sisters and others who are coming out of prison. A hundred million dollars. You you know, I went to a budget meeting, bro, DOC, right before before this whole uh, you know, uh, virus came along, I was sitting in that room and the front deck was covered with folk in their full three-piece suit with their nice folders, with their nice business card. And I'm like, who are these folks, right? And I'm like, I'm sitting at the back. And so I'm looking at this budget, they were displaying the budget and, and, and they say, oh, we talked to Dr. Raj. And I'm like, no, you, you did talk to me my ideas were taken and, and led to justifying some of the things that you are designing to do. But then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna listen. I listened, I raised my hand, I said, man, I don't understand. You, out of the $650 million, there is not even a million dollars for liberation work, mm. for abolition work. And the whole crowd laughed. They all laughed. I still remember this because this happened in, right in, in, the, in the DOC building. 
on the, on the, on the ground floor. Oh, energy park. Energy park. I was, because my office is just right next door, so I'd be like, I just walked in. And I said, why people are laughing? Then I found out $100 million is dropped on every one of them, right? Because they're all nonprofits, right? And they are there to keep the system alive and keep their pocketbooks filled. And, that's, and this is a job for them. Right, and, they, and that's why you don't see any... <laughs> Any prog real progress? Why would because, they, bro? Because they they're getting paid. They're getting for paid. Their silence. And this, you know, Amicus has been around for thirty because years, right? For thirty years, because they benefit from the program. And the well, well, it was it was like this too. Is it's like those programs that benefit, but it's these players put in positions that. Obfuscate that keep oh. you from being able to do anything yes. aggressive, but then they always then when you go to them and be like, hey, there's a there's a definitely a, 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 there's a situation that we have that we need assistance. They'll say, well, they're receiving the money. They're receiving. What are you what are you what are you what are you yes. talking about? We yeah. got money over there. We and but they're working with their their but they're they're part they're all in the cahoots together. All oh, right. So it, it's really important for us to see how they have built themselves a, a, a wall around this, this system that they have built. And these walls are made up of civilians as well, right? People who benefit from the system. So they turn around and wave to the system and they turn around and tell us, oh, don't worry, we're, we're, we're trying, trying to really work hard with the brothers and sisters who are re-entering our community. And I'm like, what in the first place is making them go into the system? Right. Have you addressed that root cause? Not at all. Why should we? Right? Because if I start addressing the root cause, then my, my nonprofit is going to go out of business. Well, yeah, if you fix the problem, right? there's no more problem. Yeah. There's no more use for you. Right. So we are never, right, we're never going to go to the roots to address these right. issues. Right. Right? We'll talk about housing shortage all year round. But we will, when we build housing, we say the first floor is Section 8 housing, affordable housing, mm -hmm. and that the rest of the floors are like $1,000 a month for a person. Right? Who, how many of us can afford $1,000 a month? I was, I was saying, I was saying like, like, what I find is a lot of individuals who come along along that channel, they actually subscribe to the DOC policies. That's why they're there. Oh, yeah. So a lot of that, oh, yeah. um, you know, um, oh, yeah. catch, catch, you know, where you have individuals coming out of prison and they're trying to uh, send them back as oh, fast yeah. as they can get them out so they can get more money for bed space. But, but you're talking about, that's, that's the correction system. That's the probation system. That's the parole system, right? What used to be parole... Now they call it what ISR, intensive supervised release and supervised release. These systems were built to keep the cycle, the process moving, right? Yeah. right? So, so I'm gonna catch you making mistakes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do practice what we call the got you culture. It's, been, it's beneficial. I'm gonna get you, bro. Yes, yeah, beneficial. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not interested in you becoming better, right? Maybe a few of us are, but for the most part, I'm going to get you, right? And that's how I build my portfolio as like the best PO. Yeah. I'm like, really? That's that's the measure of a best PO yeah. because the, the measure of a best, a good district attorney or county attorney is what? Convictions. The more people yeah, they convict. Yeah, convictions. Right. What what is that? Mm -hmm. And then you tell me that this is all you. I should trust this system. Come on, man. Stop playing. Right. I mean, that's, that's, it's like, it's so backwards. Um, yeah. But yet still people subscribe to it and they, and they, and they justify it. Um, because people more, and, and I say this, right, genuinely, people, because people think with their head and not with their body, never address all of the things that is boiling up in their body. They're like, you know what, I'm just going to go on a vacation and let loose some of those things and then come back into this same system because I don't want to change the system. I'm just going to 
go on vacation two weeks. Bro, two weeks is not enough to get all the toxins out of your body, right? So uh, we, we never engage, right? We never feel the dissonance that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Once you start to feel that, you start to raise your consciousness and you start to ask different questions. And when you ask that different questions, you become a threat. Yeah, def- definitely, definitely. Right? And this is not conspiracy. I know people who are listening, I hope you don't think that I'm a, I'm a conspiracist. Y'all need to, I mean, we need to know, right? This is, this is open book. We all know, right? I mean, this is, y'all, check this out. This is the 58th anniversary of Malcolm X being shot, killed. 58 years later, we have enough report to show that the FBI knew that this was going to go down. Yeah. The CIA knew yeah. this was going down. The state of New York knew this was going course, down. Yeah. The DA's office knew this was going down, yeah. y'all. Yeah. They all stood there and waited. Right. And they ran arrested the two wrong people on purpose. Oh, oh yeah, because because they knew. Yeah, they yeah, right? they knew exactly. They knew exactly they what they were doing. Right. Now now the family suing the federal government in the state of uh, New York for a hundred million dollars. Yeah, well, yeah. And I'm thinking like, so you had all the intel. You could have gone to them and say, "Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Why, why, why are you about to do this? Right? Can we work through this? Can we bring Malcolm here? Let's talk about some of these differences. Right. Instead, nah, we're gonna let him let because him. Malcolm is a threat a to threat. us white folks. Yeah, definitely. Right. Martin is a threat to us white folks. Right. They knew about all of the threats that Martin was having. They were more, majority of them was them creating the threat. Martin Luther, knew, Martin Luther knew. Martin Luther King said, I may not be here to see, to get to the mountaintop with you. Right? But I've seen it. Mm-hmm. And, and I want you all to keep in the stay in the struggle. And then he was taken down. Right. Because he was a threat. And we, we are taught to teach, we, we, we teach people it's like, Malcolm and Martin were fighting and they are in opposition. Man, come on, man. That's white folks saying that shit. We know for true that they were fighting for the same game. Same cause. Yeah. Right? They were fighting. They were strong in their own opinions. Yeah. Let it be. We can have multiple pathways to the top of the mountain. Definitely. It doesn't have to be one way. But they were not in conflict, y'all. Let's, let's, let's. Let's straighten that, that shit out. Right. right. Because they built a system to make sure that we have a villain and a hero. That's that binary on, oppositional man. logic that they utilize in everything. Everything, throughout, throughout bro. Mathematics, whether it be philosophy, it's always good and bad. Oh, everything. nigga, fail, nigga. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's the, the conversation. Same. But it makes it the lo- logical conversation makes sense to them. Where in a lot of different other Eastern cultures, you don't have that um, binary no. oppositional. You have more holistic approach, yes. and things make sense. Come on now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you. No. Willie Lynch. I'm just telling yeah. you facts. Willie Lynch. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Right. That whole mythology of like creating like slaves of, I, this is how you control them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is how you dehumanize them. Right. This is how you objectify them. Right. right? You you put a place of value on them. Right. And once a value is placed on them, they are as good as the table. They they, they are a table. Uh, there's in Smithsonian, they oh, yeah. in the Smithsonian they have pictures of 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 African slaves skin being made out of furniture. Oh, yeah. Um they have uh pictures of them actually eating a baby, a fetus. Yeah. Um because because once you make a, a human being into an an ad an, an, an inanimate uh, object something that has no anything uh, associated with it it then becomes easy for you to then um, um, just like you say objectify it. Oh, yeah. it it's whatever you want it's the, it's it's you can you, you can you can say that it's property yeah. and you own that property and not only property but well check it out right Jefferson. Slept with a young woman. Mm-hmm. Right you. today, yeah. and that's rape. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, you raped her. Yeah, definitely. Right, definitely. You had kids with a woman who was not even 
16, 17 years old. Right. Right? And we, that is our hero. I'm told that Jefferson is the hero. Well, he's, again, he's got I'm a like, monument what? <laughs> in, the, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. yeah, right? I mean, think about all of them, right? All of them were playing with the lives of black bodies, right? As if they don't matter. And today, I'm told that Washington and, and Jefferson and all these people are like our heroes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And I need to, like, you know, stand up and salute the flag. Yeah, they're, they're, and I'm like, fathers. Man, yeah. what are y'all talking about? Yeah. I mean, I mean that that they they because they control with the history and they control the dialogue and oh the narrative. God, yes. They are able you to ask the crowd to admit No, but that's that's like, a, what, we're so what, bored of remembering their names. No, no, like, what, what minute? Like, why? Are we, what, let's change it. What they? What, I mean, it's hard to do when they've been uh, mythology. Uh, the mythology were around them. Oh, yeah. You know, you you grew up in high school. Um, saying that George Washington charged down a cherry tree. Oh, that is never so true. That people, was, that was so he, not a tree like that. Yeah, it did. so you have all these different things like the, the Thanksgiving, you know, the fact that they went to uh, um, the Native Americans invited these individuals. Yeah. <laughs> this whole, you know, this whole, yeah. this whole myth that, you know, this Christmas, I mean, you can keep going on oh, yeah. and on and on. The total myth. The, right. the, the, the yeah. Columbus discovered yeah. in America. Yeah. Total I mean, man. Yeah, just I mean, but well, yeah. but they taught it in school. It was part of your curriculum, yeah. and you had yeah. to lie. Yeah, you know. But that, I'm but fine. but we also calling that right. This is all our part of our education process, and you need to know this history. And it is propaganda that is sitting in our body, and we don't know how to shake this. And white folks don't know how to shake it, yeah. right? So they have embraced the lie. And once you embrace the lie, it goes into your bone marrow, man. Mm. Once it's in there, it's there. Yeah. Until and unless you ask different types of questions and see through the problem and not keep walking around the problem. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. This is like, well, we, I mean, the reason I brought this conversation to you is it just, it, I think it's just uh, a macro of the micro criminal justice system. Um, it's the lies that's being told, it's the fact that people are standing on them, no. the fact that people are running yeah. um, on them, you know, they're, they're basing their political career on them, yeah. uh, they're, they're basing jobs, um, um, you know, I mean, just, you, the, the, buying the extra house, the, the extra car, whatever, the tuition is based on them being able to continue this law enforcement warmongering and not only that Mo, here let, let's be also be informed that all these private prisons that we spun in this country guess what they're showing up they're showing up in iraq they're showing up in afghanistan everywhere we have invaded we have put our foot on they're showing up in those spaces so private prisons are running prison systems in all of these various countries mm -hmm. Right. They, 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 so now they're a mega business. Well, they did that when they was in Abu Gra oh, Ghraib. Yeah, Abu when you yeah. when you when you oh, saw yeah. the the female and the pyramid of oh, bodies, yeah. Oh, yeah. those are all correctional guards from oh, yeah. the United States that went over there yeah. to go in, in that prison. Yeah. So you can just see the behavior. Oh. It, like it just it's like it's sort of what what Jonathan was talking about the blue. You know, it's just like it doesn't matter who you put in those positions of power. Yeah. They're gonna you're gonna get the same outcome. Just because the system itself is 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 itself is. Corrupt. I mean, this is this is part of why, Mo. Like for me, right? I, the fight is not about a law enforcement officer because you know we can we can convict as many law enforcement officers as you want, unless and until you repair the harm that has been done historically, right? Four hundred years of harm has not been repaired. For the indigenous communities, it's 500 years of genocide has not been repaired, right? And if we don't repair that thing, starting now, we will inherit the same system 500 years moving forward, right? Like, like Razma Menneke often say, let us remember we were in enslavement for 246 years. We've been out of enslavement shorter than that. Come on, y'all, right? And you expect everything to be hunky-dory and black people to be happy and native people to be happy because they have a reservation. Come on now. Right. The house nigga, film nigga syndrome don't wear off that fast. It's 
just come in, on in, in general in right ge- yeah in, ge- in general none of the harm has been repaired I yes. mean it's just been it's just been like forget about it I wasn't a slave owner yeah and you need to just keep it keep it moving keep it moving yeah I won't right. I don't want to hear about your problems yeah. right? right so I mean that's so we, we can't truly do restorative practices like restorative one-on-one. We have to go in and really question like, what is the harm? Not just the crime, but what is the harm? Yeah. Right? And go down and repair that harm. Yes. Right? And in order to repair the harm, you have the person who caused the harm and the person who was harmed in the same space. But our criminal justice system is never going to allow that. Our victims will be over there. You incarcerate the person over here. Yeah. We're going to remove you. Man, you're not working on repairing the harm. You're working on making sure that they stay angry. Right. And, and frustrated. And you are punished, but never allowed to own that harm. Yeah. I mean, think of... I mean, you know, you know this, 67% of the people in our nationwide prisons are there for violent crime, right? And violent crime is a symptom of the society they grow up in. Right. Mm-hmm. It is not that I was born and ready to shoot somebody. You made a system and I come into that system and I'm taking up arms to defend myself. Right. And I pull that trigger and you call that crime I'm asking that cry, that cry, that crime you say is a cry for help. I'm crying out, crying out. Listen to me. Listen to all of the ways that I am trying to defend myself in one of the strongest, richest country in the world. Right? I'm still trying to survive. And so you don't repair all of those things, right? So they say 67% of the people are there for violent crime. I'm like, yes, okay. What are we doing about violent crime, the roots of violent crime? We're not doing nothing. We're we're pumping out more weapons. Right. And you have 12-year-olds walking around with a a Glock. With a switch on. I can't even afford a Glock. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I can't afford a Glock. But I'm saying with the gentleman that was here earlier, we were talking about gun violence, and I just think it ties into that. Well, I was like just talking about what that looks like. Who should have guns? Why should we? You know, whatever. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I just, I think personally, with that, um, just sweeping things underneath the rug, and um, and then this the um, just you know pointing not you know not wanting to to take they they want you to be accountable, but they don't want to be accountable for anything. Yeah. Right. Um, because it's it's business rationale mm-hmm. and ours is they say that oh yours is an emotional danger mm. your body and your action is a danger but what I do here producing more weapons and freeing weapons so that people can sell and it can be distributed freely is a business decision right and it, that's nothing wrong with business. Yeah, and that they've always been able to justify. Oh, they justified bro, it by, yeah. by getting rid of the natives. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Episode uh, fifty. Um, yeah. Got Dr. Raj on it. Ron B. Ron B. Sure. In the middle in the building. So uh, sit down. Sit down. Uh, I just got about. a phone call, man. And uh, I have a friend that owns a nightclub slash restaurant. And I have a brother. You no, know, he's not my biological brother, but he's yeah. like a brother to me. He's he's a real close friend of mine, mm-hmm. and like we're brothers, just mm-hmm. like me and you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he got himself kicked out of my friend's establishment. Lo and behold, tonight is his friend's birthday, his best friend's birthday, and his best friend rented out a space in my friend's nightclub. Mm-hmm. Um, unbeknownst. That his best friend, my brother, is is, is kicked out of there, mm-hmm. like for life. He's eighty six for life. Mm-hmm. So he calls me tonight, and he's like, "Ron, it's my best friend's birthday tonight, and uh, he rented out your friend's place. I ain't saying no names, intentionally, but uh, 
And they said if I don't show my face in there, if I'm not able to go in there, they're going to tear it up after they get done partying. So what do I do? Call up the owner and let them know. Cancel that reservation. Give them their money back. I tried that. What happened? It didn't work. He said they just had a party two weeks ago and they didn't have no issues, so it's kind of hard for him to... Like, you did your job. I did my due diligence. He's, yeah, you, if he doesn't listen, that's on him, not you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you informed him, did more than what you could have done, should have done. Mm -hmm. I think it's... I mean, I would feel comfortable with it. They decide to fuck it up. You told him. Mm -hmm. You'd be messed up if you, you, you kept it to your chest. Right. And knew about it. I let him know way ahead of time, like hours before the event. Yeah, you can get the money back and and and, and just tell them their reservation's canceled. Go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Tear that up. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think it's even a, a question at all. It's just a matter of ethics, morality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also, I'm, I'm also hearing, right, there's a human factor in here, right? Like, there's a conflict that we need to address. The right? conflict so, is, yeah. I work there. Yeah. The person who owns the, one of the owners of the establishment is my friend. It's a friend, yeah. The person that's kicked out is my brother. Right. Yeah. The person who's having a party, party. they're yeah. gang affiliated. Yeah. So, like... So these, this conversation has to happen between all of them, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if the gang affiliation and others who are there for a party now, if they know, hey, don't tear up this place, but we're going to have a deeper conversation, mm -hmm. right, in a week time, mm -hmm. right? And then let's figure out how that resolution is going. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't resolve those conflict, it's always going to be another time, another time mm -hmm. something is mm -hmm. about to mm -hmm. pop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we... This is the thing that like, about restorative practices is that we got to keep working at repairing harm, mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. we don't repair the harm, it will blow up somewhere, mm -hmm. right? It may be tonight, it may be the next night, it may mm -hmm. be some other night. We got to get some resolve somewhere. Gotta, yeah, and both parties didn't need to know, right? Maybe today is too late for us to have a conversation, but mm -hmm. at least they know, mm -hmm. hey, don't tear up this place because we have a chance to talk mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we need y'all to come. Mm -hmm. Right on its on a, another day, mm -hmm. right, and we will have a a third party mediator here to mm -hmm. listen, so mm -hmm. that we can all come back together and figure out. We may never agree. Your friend, your 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 gang buddy may not be able to come back into the club, but at least we have a resolution of what happened, mm -hmm. why that was the decision that was made. Well, I was there when he got yeah, himself yeah, kicked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. He 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 got himself kicked out. It was his yeah. own fault. Sure. Like I was there. I seen it. But when everybody it everybody needs to hear that, mm -hmm. right? Everybody needs mm -hmm. to hear that. Mm -hmm. I I can't just simply say I'm affiliated with this brother. So whatever you do to the, if the brother get kicked out, then I'm gonna hurt you. That type of rationale doesn't allow us to repair the harm. Mm -hmm. It only perpetuates the harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Right? Like, so that's the thing that we, we don't get to. Roz, you know the sad part about this whole uh -huh. situation? We're all people of color in I this know. situation. Man. Right? And then, and then, and then, when I say we're all people of color in this situation. Yeah, I'm just in the I, kitchen. I, I'm just in the kitchen. I even, I even mean. Just the, trying to, I mean, oh, I thought you were talking to me. I even mean the owner of the nightclub. Oh. Yeah. I even mean the owner oh, yeah. of the nightclub. I hear you. Yeah. People of color, gang, people of color, me, oh. people of color. You know, like, why we just can't get along? Yeah. So, I mean, this is what, you know, uh, Sam Simmons, who is, a, who is an amazing brother here, he does this, um, you know, yearly conference on Black Man Healing Conference. And Sam Simmons often say, right, Raj, we have not addressed all of the ways that we have been harmed. So when we don't address it, it manifests in our body. And then we do what was done to us. Mm -hmm. Now we do it against one another. One another, yeah. Because that wound that is sitting in there hasn't been repaired, mm -hmm. right? Hasn't been addressed. So people might not understand the power of the wound that is in our body, right? It, it manifests and now I'm ready to take a gun and point at you, right? 
because I see you as the enemy, not white supremacy as the enemy. Because I don't understand white supremacy, but I understand that you just dished me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You just shade, threw some shade at me, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I'm gonna shoot you, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I see you mm -hmm. as a problem, as opposed to all of the ways that the problem has manifested in my body. I don't address my trauma, I address the immediate problem. Right? Trauma has a history, has roots. And this is the thing that I'm hoping that these brothers will understand and the owner will understand and let's, let's mm -hmm. get to a table where we can sit down and resolve, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, what happened in Harding, right? I mean, it was all in the newspaper. 15 year old got out of detention center. Bro, he's been there in school for three hours. Mm -hmm. Three hours. First day of school. First day of school. Yeah. Three hours. Mm -hmm. And he was killed. Mm -hmm. Because these two young people have no idea how to resolve because they are like, they're just acting out what they see. Mm -hmm. Right? This ain't a computer game. Mm -hmm. This ain't a internet game. This ain't, this, this we, we got to figure out how to talk to one another. And I wish, right, people who knew they had beef didn't say nothing. They stood there and waited for that for that to happen. Mm -hmm. The sheriff here, mm -hmm. Ramsey County Sheriff, said he had intel something was about to go down. Mm -hmm. Bro, at least step in to the mother and say, hey, your son should be in school today. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out what this beef is about. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just gonna wait. Because when this, if this happens, I get $5 million or so $10 million to build a juvenile prison mm -hmm. in your community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he is doing. John Choi, liberal, progressive person, is saying, I'm going to go ask for state funding to build a center and couch it under, we're going to do mental health and it's going to be a safe and secure space. Bro, we don't need that space if you do the work here. If you invest in my community, in you don't school, need to in do In the school, Thank invest you. in the school, in the school, in the kids, in the yeah. kids. And the family. Yeah. Right? Invest in them. Yeah. yeah. Why invest in a building? Why invest in incarceration? Yes. Right? So, I mean, like, I, you know, they get mad at me, man. I'm like, why Why do you have to say? I said, bro, like, you don't, I, like, please understand. I'm not trying, I, I've got nothing against you. Mm -hmm. You be who you want to be. But when you involve and harm the community, I'm going to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm asking you questions because you knew something was about to brew. Why Why wait for for that brew har ha to support your rationale for building? Oh, as soon as this is over with? Yeah. Like, when I'm done with y'all? Yeah. I'm gone. I'm yeah. leaving right from here and go address these dudes yeah. that's going to this party tonight Please. at my friend's nightclub. Yeah. I'm like, y'all stupid if y'all do this. Y'all y'all dumb y'all dumb as fuck. Like, why? Why and not, why would you do that? And, and invite them to say, hey, go have a good time. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Right? You have a club, go have fun. Come back out and then ask for a a conversation. Yeah. I, I'm and gonna tell them. And you know what I'm gonna tell them tonight? I'm gonna tell them, I'm gonna say, listen. My brother, my brother got himself kicked out. I was right there when it happened. Yeah. He messed up on his own. I'm not fending for him in this situation. He's kicked out for a reason. He's kicked out because he's an idiot when he gets drinks that fire water. Oh, yeah, I agree. He's an idiot. And I've seen it when it happened. It's, it's not nothing nobody told me or nothing. I've seen it with my own eyes. I was right there when it happened. So if y'all go fend for him for some... Dumb stuff that he did on his own, y'all stupid too. Because y'all going to go to jail because right behind you're not helping him address his alcoholism. Right. 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 And he's going to continue to be. Right. Right. Because now you have rationalized his behavior. Right. And come on, man. Work to help him. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, right. just, I just feel like it's really not even a conversation. Um, it's It becomes a situation where... Um, like, well, how does this even, how does it even make sense? How does it make sense, the fact that 
this dude is kicked out, so what we're gonna do is go destroy this club. Personally, I think they just, I think he just trying to manipulate me because he knows I'm friends with the owner and try to give me a sideways threat and try to ease his way back ease in. His way. Oh, okay. Yeah, but how is that? You know what, what I'm saying? Saying? I really what don't I, think what I was, what I was really... getting, What I was getting at, all I was saying is that how does this even make sense, sense yeah. for him to say that, mm -hmm. knowing that he knows who the owner is? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He and knows. He, know he, he could have been went to he, him and apologized to he, him. But he also knows. He could have been manned up and said, "Hey, but hey, man, the, I'm the, sorry, the, man. I messed the, up that the, night." Because physically, didn't that happen? Not it was all verbal. It was yeah, all verbal. The, the, the problem that I'm, like I said, I'm having is just the maturity level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't go to the club. Oh well, go somewhere else. You know why? Are you, why is it? Why is it even that? Even if it's just the idle threat, why is it being made? Me. Right to this gentleman. That's why I think it's it's uh, like, uh, I think it's I think they're using me right now to yeah, yeah but they, squeeze they, through. Yeah, the but it would, like you said, because they know I'm friends. It would it would have been better off for him just to apologize to Wes. Yeah, he should have did that long time. He should that six months ago when he did it. When, the, when the, it happened, explain the situation to him and then go move on from there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that would show more maturity level. That's all I'm trying to question is yeah. like, where's the maturity level at? Well, I, and you know, and I say, even as Sam Simmons said, say, it, you said the name too. Right, maturity. You supposed to do that. Uh, maturity. Those don't know, no. But Those here's, know here's the deal, right? <laughs> right, that's they why you weren't supposed to say that. They don't know who he is. Well, yeah. you're right. You're yeah. right. Here's the deal, though. You know, there is such thing as bandwidth, right? Mm -hmm. When we have a large bandwidth, we can watch like HBO. You know, Netflix, right, Disney, all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when your bandwidth is reduced, you can only let in one channel. And that's how our brains work too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When our bandwidth is sucked up with, with stress and trauma. And, and rigor and roll and bullshit. And guess what? It shrinks. Yeah. And now, I'm just looking to survive. Total vision. I'm just total looking vision to survive. Yeah. I'm going to fight. I'm going to run away. I'm going to I'm going to be quiet. Whatever mm -hmm. I do, survive. Mm -hmm. My bandwidth to resolve problems and say, "Wait, that makes sense. That makes sense. This is a different mm -hmm. perspective. That's a different perspective. I'm going to listen to my brother here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go talk to the owner. I am going to use all options." Mm -hmm. But right now, when we get into that struggle mode, man, when we get into the survival mode, sorry, right? We shrink our bandwidth and mm -hmm. say, is do or die. Mm -hmm. Bro, is it not do or die, man? Right. There are a hundred clubs you can go have fun. It's better on this side than on that side yeah. in, in prison. I've been there, done that. Come on, man. Yeah. It's better on this yeah. side. So, I mean, I hope you can talk to, to the gang. I'm going to go find them. I'm going to go As soon as we like, get done, I'm going. I mean, I know where to find I don't have to go find them. Yeah. Like, I know where to go. Where to like, go. I'm going to my mom's house, and, and I'm going to go talk to them. Be like, man, you stupid. We, we, um, you need to tell your friends they stupid. Yeah. We, we um I, I want to thank uh, Dr. Raj for uh, coming in. Yeah. Do you have anything that's coming up, events, or anything that yeah, we should know about? Yeah, decided to tear down a building that could be used for by the Native community, right? Which building uh, is that? It's it's uh, the name of the building is escaping, but it's on the Philip that uh, Philip neighborhood right here, and that neighborhood, right? The thirty eight different tribes that live in the Little Earth community. Mm -hmm. Right, they cannot till their soil in the backyard, bro, because the soil is so polluted. They can't till, the kids cannot go out there and play. If they pay long, they will suck in all that pollutants in that community. Little Earth, right here mm -hmm. in South Minneapolis. South Minneapolis. Yeah, bro. Right? And, and the mother who's fighting, she lost a 14 year old son because he had cancer because of what he sucked up in that environment. And so what they said is that give us this building, we're gonna create a recreational space for our young people to play. We wanna create a garden, hydroponic garden, so we can feed fresh vegetables to our communities. Mm -hmm. The city of Minneapolis say, hell no. We're gonna to vote to tear down and build a garage for to park our cars, okay. city cars. Yeah, so sense. what caused the pollution in the, in the neighborhood? There was, there, was, there was all kinds of uh, uh, chemicals released in that earth by companies that were there before. Oh. But they never 
cleaned up. Do yeah. y'all know the names of the companies no, that I, was there I before? The company should out. be definitely there. Oh yeah. Doing I that. mean, but but the city need to know its responsibility. The thirty-eight. This is thirty-eight. Remember, y'all. Thirty-eight in Phillips. 30, no, thirty-eight uh, different tribes that are posted oh. in that little 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 um, uh, you know little village that for uh, little native native community, mm -hmm. right? And remember, right? There are more people who live in the Twin Cities who are native than in reservations, and yet we don't know how to make a house a friendly place for them, hmm. right? And now. They're fighting simply to survive. In the city of Minneapolis, where the murder of George Floyd happened, where AIM, right, American Indian movement started mm -hmm. because of the police abuse in the 70s, just like, right, Black Panther movement in Oakland, they had the same rationale for starting AIM. This is the same group now has to fight one more time to get a decent place for their kids to have a good place to run. So that, that is happening tomorrow at 12 o'clock, right, um, around that, that, that particular uh, community. So there are, there are things like this, man, and Yu Zhang was just shot, right? The police took the fight to him, right? This man walked away. Oh, the Asian, the, 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 the Asian dude. Yeah, he, he's a senior since He couldn't hear. He couldn't I hear I just it. seen it. I just seen it on yeah, my news feed. He couldn't hear it. Mm. He had a knife. But yeah. he was holding the knife and he was yeah. walking into his house. Uh, own house, yeah. Own house. And he closed the door and they went in behind him. They went and knocked and took And so killed him. It's like, why are you taking the fight to them? You usually claim that the fight is coming towards you. He so was you deaf. Have, he couldn't hear. Yeah, but the, 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 He didn't hear the, them the, telling the, him the, to put the knife down. Where, where the fight is going. It's 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 a it's a it's a they 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 think they're in a third or in a, a, a undeveloped country and they're dealing with individuals of that nature. They don't think they're dealing with U.S. citizens. Yeah. So the approach. But is Mo, more, this is where community-based policing comes in. Oh yeah. Well, because no, if they was community-based policing, they would have knew he was a deaf man. Yeah. No, I, no, no, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm if not. they if they was part of that community or if they knew that community, it's, then they would have knew he was a deaf man and when they killed him. It's that's true indeed, but the problem exists because when you train a pit to be yeah. a fighter, oh, yeah. that's, that's all he too. knows. That's all they know. When you when you train those individuals to do one thing, all they know is to be brutal, to attack. They don't understand what a resolution looks like. A yeah. resolution is at the butt of their gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the people you're dealing with, the mentality you're dealing with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard for me to take a pit that's being mm -hmm. trained as a fighter yeah. and make him a house dog house. and, yeah. and right. not have right. him bite right. out of, Little kids. Uh, or, yeah, by accident or, or, because or, he's yeah, been... Yeah, yeah. Or the mailman. He's always going to be... They feel like it's a threat. Right, right, he's always right, gonna right, be right. He's a killer. You yeah, train him to be a killer, he's a killer. Yeah, you train him to be a killer all the time. You train your police officers to be killers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we call it the principle of mechanics, right? Like where if you if you give somebody a hammer, they're going to be looking for a nail every day. Everything's mm -hmm, a nail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything's right. a nail. That's they want something to hit with it. No, well, that, that's the only tool. They want something that's to hit with it. That's the only tool they have. So, yep. so you, yep. you, you, yep. Don't, you, you, you see a screw, you're going to use your hammer. Yeah. Right. You see a, a, a tap, you know, attack, you're going to use a hammer. You see, you see whatever, you're going to use a hammer because that's the only tool you have. Right. And, well, that's, that's, and that's what's going on with them. With them, yeah. Right. It's IGSTS, SAFMO, your prison lawyer, yeah. finally got the honorable... No, a uh, noble man, genius, wisdom, knowledge. You know what I'm saying? The man demands a wealth of knowledge. Sit there, sit here all day and just talk to him and, and just buy. Um, and I appreciate him. I thank you for coming appreciate on, it. man. Yep. Yeah, I remember. I remember one night. I remember Rod. one night. I remember one night after I had seen Roger in in, 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 in a joint. I'm up late at night watching um, TV One. He pop on TV. He do the uh, he do the uh, crime, analysis. The, the crime analysis. I was like, I know that man. I know him. <laughs> superstar. We got a superstar in our midst, folks. In the comment, Doctor Raj is on. Uh, what, was, what show was that? It's a crime. It's a crime. It was a crime show. I, I, it was it was true like crime. True, crime. true crime. True crime show. Where he was doing the analysis for this man. Is a, Shout out to Malik. Ch -ch 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 -ch. You're a hero, Ron. What do you got to say about uh, SAF?